Hey, I've uh, just made some toast. Do you want some? I uh, thought we could go to work today. Business as usual. Yeah, just brush everything under the carpet. Sorry, Steve, I can't do that. I've got far too much on my mind. Yeah, you didn't sleep very well, did you? I was thinking of the other way out, actually. I flee the country, somewhere where they haven't got an extradition order. You what? And then I thought, would you come with me? But that's an unfair question, isn't it? Because you've done nothing wrong, have you? It's me the police are after. Yeah, I laid it on a bit thick, didn't I? I'm, I'm sorry. I just, when I get desperate, I say stupid things. What, are you saying you didn't mean it? Yeah. No, no, well, um, I'm just not very good with words, am I? It just all comes out wrong. I was just trying to make you see sense, I suppose. See sense? Oh, how many times have I heard that? Only the thing is, Steve, your sense just seems to differ from everybody else's. Yeah, well, maybe it comes down to a matter of loyalty. Have you ever thought of that? What I mean is, who do you choose? Me or your family? And before you say you haven't got any, let me just correct you. Your Uncle Nick, Grandad, a damn sight more family than I've got. Don't twist things. It's me that's in trouble here. Yeah, and wouldn't you just love it to be me? Well, wouldn't you? No. <gasps> Why? Why, Vicky? Because you'd go to prison. Oh, and what's wrong with that? Useless Steve, the man they all told you not to marry. Be a relief, wouldn't it? You'd be happy. Your family... Oh, shut up! Well, Vicky, please. Don't let them turn you against me. If, if I haven't got you, I haven't got anybody. Yeah, it's a, it's a sort of whistling noise when I turn the blower on. I wouldn't bother normally, but I'm going away for a few days. Yeah, it's probably your boat what needs sighting. Uh, how far are you going? Keel University, of course. It's uh, not too far, I suppose, but far enough for a non-mechanical like me. Yeah, well, how's this afternoon sound? A bit busy at the moment. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Um, couldn't give it a quick once-over while you're at it, could you? Make sure nothing in danger of dropping off. Yeah, uh, go on. I'll do my best. Thanks, Kevin. See you later. Yeah, see you now. Bye. Morning. Morning. Uh, where's Ken Wob? I want to do this for him. I said I'll do it this afternoon. Uh, he'll be lucky. Hey, yeah, three cabs. Two full service and one the time is up the shoot. When for? Son's boss. Cab driver's cab. Time is money. <laughs> Sorry, Don. They're going to have to wait the turn like everyone else has to. Oh. Barlow's getting his. He's not waiting, is he? He's getting his this afternoon. Yeah, well, that's two minutes of a job, isn't it? I mean, the full service takes hours. If you knew anything about cars, you'd know that. I know about cars, Kevin. Yeah, driving them. What do you know about fixing them? Huh. Every man to his trade, eh? Yeah, well, like you said, there's no money in taxes. Why do you think Baldwin never touched it? Well, he hasn't got my influence, has he? Look, Kev, I've got the lads interested. If you give them a, a swift turnaround and a fair rate, you can forget about these tin pot jobs. Excuse me, Don, it's the tin pot jobs what's kept this place going. Oh, Kev, look, I've promised I'm supposed to be the boss round here. Yeah, well, when Baldwin was in charge, you know... Oh, I'm sick of hearing about Baldwin. Look, I'm sorry if I trod on your toes, but I want them cabs done. OK. As soon as the gear arrives, I'll get stuck in. How's that sound, boss? What would they say if I went and admitted everything? They'd say I was lying just to save you. I can't win either way, can I? But it would be the truth, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it would be my truth. Steve McDonald's. Who's going to believe Steve McDonald? They'd left me at the police station, Vicky. But you, what could they do to you? A girl in love with a husband, willing to do anything for him. Slap wrists, yeah, maybe, but but that's all. I don't know that. Well, you wouldn't bet against it, I'm telling you. See, you did it for love. To save me from going down. You see what sense I'm making? Or oh, there's the alternative. Your granddad's alternative. Well, that doesn't even bear thinking about, does it? See, so you just got to keep reminding yourself of what's important, Vicky. Me and you, staying together. I 
See you later. You were keeping it dark again, weren't you? Old Flaming Street knew before I did. You didn't want the horse fair. It was you that gave me a rollicking for getting it, remember? Sneaking about like a flaming assassin. Shame on you. I was saving your feelings because I know how sensitive you are. Anyway, there's no cut and dried, is there? Yeah, well, that horse will be cut and dried when the Senate to Belgium, won't it? Murdering a racehorse. Do you know you let me sick Jack Duckworth? Just a couple of contradictions there, Vera. Number one, we are not murdering it. Number two, it's not a racehorse. It's more like a flaming cart horse. Well, let it pull carts, then. Why kill it? Morning. Is the tea still hot? I should have make a fresh pot. Vera, you can't get sentimental over bloodstock. If the horse can't perform, it's got to go. Well, you can't perform, but I'm not killing you. Billy's killing that now. That if you think he's part of this, you're wrong. He's not. No. Did you hear that, Jack? It's you and Billy against that Fred Elliot. Fred has got the majority share, right? He's got three eights. Me and Billy have only got two eights. Well, Don Brennan, then, and that Gary Mallet. How many eights is that, Betsy? Oh, search me. Right, what are we going to do if we keep it, eh? Donkey rides in the park? Have it stuffed and put on the fireplace? You're not thinking, woman! What's wrong with your present, exactly? Full of tatty theatricals? No, oh, only meant to be temporary till I get my own place, you know, Rita. <laughs> hey, talking of places, I believe next door's up for sale. Regis flat, yet? Yeah. You're not thinking of buying that. Mm, reconnoitering, Rita, just reconnoitering. But why round here? It's not as pretty as Southampton, I'll bet. Ah, well, that's where you've got it wrong. You see, it's not what you're taking with your eyes. It's what you feel in here. Back among me own, folk I love and respect. I've travelled the world and I tell you, Rita, there's no warmer spot than Weatherfield. Did a lot of Arctic cruises, didn't you? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it. Yes, love. Get your drawing pins, please, Rita. Drawing pins, eh? And them to prick your conscience. That's 55. Bye, Alec. Uh, 55, love. You upsetting your relatives again? I haven't said a word. You don't mind if I browse a bit, do you? Give me relative a chance to fall under a bus or something. Do you know, Alec, we're just saying how nice it is to be back amongst his own. Alf, lad, I'm glad I found you. I'd like a little word with you about our four-legged friend. Oh, I'm not interested. I've enough trouble with Audrey already. Why do you think I'm buying frozen dinners? No, no, I've come round to your way of thinking. Maybe there is a solution. Mm -hmm. The flogging it for us, mate, you mean? Oh, Fred Elliott's already suggested that, Maud Love. I've not said yes, I've not said no. Now, he is the majority shareholder and I'm a Democrat. Yes, but he's only the majority shareholder for now, isn't he? If we put all our eights together, our eights are going to be more worth more than his eights, aren't they? To do what? One ninety-nine. Please. Well, I don't know. I was hoping you might come up with an idea. Well, I haven't. Ask the horse. He might think of something. Now, look, Jack, don't you repeat this because I shall deny it. Now, I bought into that horse because I wanted a business venture. And I'd be a liar if I said I didn't want some sort of return, right? Thank you, love. Well, that was about an horse, you for over your flaming door, then. Oh, Maud, that old neck is giving me some hassle, love. More fool you for buying it. Talking about Vera, not the horse, love. <laughs> hey, don't you dare quote me on that. <laughs> Uncle Nick. Hello, Ricky. What are you doing here? I wish you could say it was a social call, but it isn't. Is your husband about? No, he's at work. Why did you want him? No. Why didn't you tell me he visited Malcolm Fox? He's just trying to sort things out. How do you know? Your grandfather rang me. If there's any sorting out to be done, Vicky, then I do it with your help. Look, me and Steve have had a long talk. I did wrong, and I'm prepared to accept what's coming to me. Then you don't need me anymore. Not with Steve representing you. I married Steve, for better or for worse. That include lying for him? Oh, people have killed for love before now. True. But did they live happily ever after? Life goes on, Vicky. What kind of life will you and Steve have when this is all over? And what kind of life would I have if I sent him to prison? He doesn't seem to have any qualms about sending you there. The police are building a case against you, a strong one. A custodial sentence is a high probability. I don't know that for sure. No. 
I was forgetting. Steve's advising you now, isn't he? You did it for love, without his knowledge. That's what he wants you to say? The young, innocent wife who can't bear the thought of her husband doing time? I don't doubt you love him. How much do you think he loves you? The same. No man would do this to the woman he loves, believe me. Have I to lie upon lie to save his guilty neck? You once said you'd come with me and make a statement. My last piece of advice, do it. I can't! Before it's too late. Before the police acquire their star witness and add perjury to the list of charges. What star witness? Your husband. Swearing his innocence and claiming that you acted completely off your own bat. If he loves you enough to drag you in this deep, he loves you enough to do that. For all we know, he could be doing it already. Come on, Alec, you can tell me. What's the real reason you left Southampton? <laughs> Told you. Oh, aye. Home is where the heart is and all that. Didn't believe a word. It'll do for starters, though, won't it? The official version's none too pretty. Give it me anyway. Just between us. Difference of opinion, Rita. I thought I was doing a good job, Sunliners thought otherwise. Promoted a chap above me barely out of nappies. They dumped you, then? Oh, I was still with the company. Well, why Weatherfield? Got bad memories for you, surely. It was the best of two alternatives on offer. The other was something they called facilities coordinator. Counting ping pong balls and checking jigsaws and any pieces missing. Alec Gilroy, travel agent. Bye, Egg. I'll cope. Mm. Who's looking after the shop while you're uh, swanning round Coronation Street? Oh, it's in safe hands. Time out to view properties. Mm. Saw a flat this morning, an anorexic ferret come to lived in. They wanted 30 grand. Have you thought of renting? I mean, Mike Baldwin's got some flats on uh, Crimea Street. <sighs> Couldn't give me money to him, but be like opening a main vein for Dracula. Look at that collection there. And to think Walt Disney died without drawing any of them. You know Fred Elliott, do you? Oh, uh, there's lads we used to go to Levin Zoom Palais together. Mm. Fancies himself as a dancer. Oh, we all did in them days. Trouble was, every time Fred opened his trap, you couldn't hear the band. So it's square one, isn't it? Can't run, you can't jump. Keep it as a pet, that's what you want, because it is. You can buy me out, I see. You can buy me out. Oh, give over, Fred. I'll give you an hypothetical. You lot are in a swamp, sinking slowly up to your necks. I'm on dry land and I chuck you a rope. Do you grab the rope and save yourselves, or do you invite me into the swamp to join you? Right. Now, where is your good lady, Jack? I feel she is in need of some verbal persuasion. He's out shopping. Mm. Then it's crunch time. Do I go ahead with the necessary arrangements in Belgium? Or do you two hypocrites buy me out? Yeah, well, all the, all the, all the owners aren't here, are they? No, uh, Jack's right, Fred, but we can't speak for everything. Probably is when they do speak, they say out. Right, I want a gathering of the owners, Jack. A decision has got to be made, and quick. Well, are you still killing it? In abeyance, Betsy, in abeyance. Yeah, it's going to help you. We're here to see Detective Constable Cannon. On his dinner. Anything I can do? Nicholas Wilding, solicitor. And this is my client, Victoria MacDonald. She's here to make a voluntary statement regarding charges pending against her. Right. Uh, well, if you'll like to take a seat, I'll try and raise the DC. Listen to me without losing your temper. Fred's been in. Now then, me and Don... Oh, that's we, slaughter. I said, listen. Me and Don have racked our brains and we can't see no other way out. It, it's Belgium and now. You see, we are all in a swamp and Fred's the only one with a rope. Look, Jack, it's called Betty's Hot Shot. How do you think Betty's going to feel if you kill her namesake? Will you give over? It's that kind of talk that is making me look an idiot. Look, if it can't run, you teach it, don't you? 
What are we going to do? Tie it to buckle in for Christie? Well, I know you could borrow a rope from that Fred Elliot. Oh, yes, very, very funny. Yes, very funny. You are determined to show me up in front of my mates, aren't you? If it means saving that race, Ash, yes. Right, well, we've uh, stopped the whistling anyway, but that's about all we could do, Ken. I've been pulled out trying to keep the boss man happy. Oh, yeah? Don't crack in the whip, is he? Hey, you may chuckle, you know, but we decided to do exactly as he tells us. Yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, <laughs> sir. Right, well, how much do I owe you? Uh, nothing. It's on the house, that. But don't sell Don Brennan, will you, eh? He'll have me guts for gases. Just sorry I couldn't do a bit more for you. Oh, wow. Well, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, See you then, anyway. Yeah, bye. The key doesn't fit. It doesn't fit? Well, you brought the wrong key. What, what kind of an estate did you die? Don't blame me. I just tell Pout, sure foot brown properties. How the hell do you do that when you can't get in? <laughs> if you tempt me, have a go. It's no use. It's supposed to be the right keys. It says so on the tag. I'm saying it's not fair on the girl. I've been brought in while he trips off on his own. Oh, Kelly's looking forward to it. She said so this morning. Well, mine the kid is wanting. Mine in somebody else's home is another. She's not old enough. I bet nobody ever said that to you. Eh? When you were fighting the war. Go on, Percy. You're only a slip of a lad. But I don't, didn't I? I wasn't on my own. I always thought you were, Mr. Subden. Oh, very funny. I wish you a good day. <laughs> uh, do you know anything about this? What? Locks at number 12. They've been changed. Sign's gone and all. And what's it got to do with you? Herbert Townsend. Uh, I do part-time. Uh, the, the agents, you know. They ring me up, yes, whenever anybody yeah, yes, wants to right, do... Yes, all right, all yeah, right. The point is I can't get in. It's not for sale. Not for sale. Your lot said it was. A picture still at window. We'll sell the picture. You yeah, what? That flat is not for sale. My estranged husband put it on the market without consulting me. Well, I've decided to take it off the market and use it as a family home. Have you both got that? I'd best uh, check at the office, Mr Gilroy. Office? It's a flabbing chip shop, more like. Complete waste of time. By heck, I'm proud of you, our Maureen. And there was me thinking you were getting cold feet. Hm. And when you get back, tell them my time's valuable. Yeah, I will, Mr Gilroy. I don't like being messed about. I will. I'm wasting my time and all with this palaver. I mean, if they give you keys, you expect shut them to... Shut up, fit. Herbert. Just shut up. Hey, Steve, what's the problem, mate? Stitching me up again, Dad. I haven't done it. Oh, come on. Don't you think it's time you left this wee lad alone, eh? Where are you taking him now? He's under arrest and you're getting in the way. Well, just you hold your horses a minute now here, eh? Dad, leave him. On the other hand, Mr Gilroy, it might help if you came back with me. I sort it out quicker with the manager. No. Forget it. Well, well, well. We'll have to talk about this, Kelly. Don't have you doing the domestics as well as looking after Daniel. I did them while he was asleep this afternoon. I can't have you going on your car scruffy, can I? Well, I'm grateful, really. It's no trouble. Um, I was going to ask if it... Um, it don't matter. What? Well, I was going to ask if it would be all right if I went early. Say no if you like. Yes, it's the least I could do after you've done all my ironing. I didn't do it for that. I did it because it needed doing. I know, and it's wonderful. I'll just take him upstairs. Thank you, Mr Barlow. <clears throat> I'll get it. Oh, OK. Are you ready? I'm sorry I'm late. I'll get me coat. Oh, hello, Mr Barlow. Actually. You should be grateful he hasn't asked you, Emily. It's hard work looking after youngsters, you know. Well, I'm not complaining. It's Mr Sugden who thinks I should be more involved. Is he trying to get you a job or what? <laughs> well, he thinks I'm hurt because Ken doesn't rely on me like he used to. I'm not, of course. Though, uh, still, it'd be nice to be asked more often. <laughs> Give over, Emily. You and Ken are like family. Well, that's not quite true, Rita. Whether it's me that's changed or him, I have no idea, but uh, you know, we're not as close as we were. Shouldn't you be over there at that meeting? Oh, spare me that. I've had my say. Yeah. Just like you had your say to Kevin, hmm? 
Oh, we didn't fall out or anything. I just went over there to check that he was doing the cabs and he was, so... Oh no, 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 I think that, uh, I think young Kevin's coming round to my way of thinking. Well, if you're that persuasive, shouldn't you be over there trying to save that horse? Ah, Kevin McNandle. Fred and Vera are somewhere else. <laughs> no, look, all I'm saying is our Jack owns an eighth. Well, I'm his wife, aren't I? So I own half an eighth. Sixteenth. Don't you tell your line, Mrs Duckworth, we're still out of pocket. Look, Fred, Billy and Donna are against it, and so am I. I'll field you out for a couple of bob, that leaves Gary. Well, I... Fred says we're out of pocket. Look, I'll cause a stink if you kill it. I will, I'll go to the papers. And I'm not on my own either, because Rita Sullivan over there, she were up in arms when she got to know. Go over and ask her she's there. Right, I'm off. Early papers in the morning. All right. Good night, Rita. Good night, Rita. Good night. Night. Night, Rita Lowe. Night. Night, Fred. Good night, Rita Lowe. Right. I am willing to concede. I suggest we postpone Belgium if Mrs Duckworth gives an undertaking to stay on board, become involved like. Well, I am involved. Where are you going with it, Fred? Being involved comes at a price, Mrs Duckworth. Yeah, well, I'll dip in every month, you know, like you do. Uh, one, what were it? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, but we're still no better off. Exactly. Well, we've got a stay of execution until Mrs Duckworth decides the correct course to take. Am I being fair? Me? Well, you are our one stumbling rock, Mrs Duckworth. Uh, may I call you Vera? Yeah? <laughs> now, you were willing to take a more involved part in this, were you? Well, yeah, I am. Good. Now then, <clears throat> while you're deliberating, perhaps you'd be good enough to pay these. Oh, well, that's... Trainers, stables and food bills. £873, 62p and counting. Welcome on board, Vera. Nice one, Fred. I'd best be off. See you. Hello. You and your big trap. Ah, <clears throat> Don't worry. I've just come to deliver a message. Uh, your son has been arrested again. Steve? Mm -hmm. What for? I don't know, Elizabeth. They wouldn't tell me. I'll make sure you've got everything you want. I don't want you coming back here. I'll have to come back. There's things I need. Yes, well, anything you want, we'll buy fresh. What's this? I'm going with Grandad. How come they let you go? Dustbin's full, were they? I paid me on bail, actually, if you must know. You've done it, haven't you? Steve! You've finally done it! Steve, don't. Go on, then. Be predictable. Take a poke. It's what everyone expects. You shouldn't have done it, Vicky. You shouldn't have let this loser talk you into it. I didn't. Not to wait in the car. Two minutes, and then I'm coming back up. Why, Vicky? Why'd you drop me in it? I've told enough lies. I feel... Much better now. Oh, well, great for you, yeah. I think I can finally live with myself. What I can't live with anymore is you. Oh, come on. Steve, don't touch me! Vicky! 